Okay, so let's see if you have the basic percent skills needed to solve this simple math problem, which is the following. It takes 80 turns to close a valve. You turn the valve 15 times. What percent of the job remains to close this valve 100%? All right, so this is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you're frustrated with learning math or if you really want to understand the subject, then check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer, let's take another look at the problem. So we are talking about a valve. Now, hopefully all of you know what a valve is, but uh, basically you can kind of think of it as like a little uh, something with a round handle, maybe in a valve stem. So if you go outside your house and you want to turn on the water hose, well, you got to open the valve, right? So that's what we're talking about. Now, in this particular case, uh, it takes 80 turns to close this valve. Now, we need to kind of make an assumption here, and that is that the valve is 100% open, right? So this valve is completely open. So to completely close it, it takes 80 turns. All right, now you turn the valve 15 times. What percent of the job remains to close this valve 100%? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is 81.25%. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. And if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm totally lost. Well, no big deal. I'm going to go ahead and explain the solution right now. Okay, so once again, here is our problem. Now, you can't answer a question unless you understand the question, right? So if you're like, I don't know what a valve is, well, obviously you need to understand what a valve is, and hopefully now you kind of get the idea of this question. But uh, beyond that, what you want to do is use something called the rule of three. Now, this is basically common sense, and that is read a problem at least three times. Really make sure you have all the information in your brain and you really thought about the question, right? So uh, from my experience, it takes a good three times at a minimum, you know, before you start doing any kind of math to actually solve the problem. So take your time. It's always a good investment to really understand the problem thoroughly before you start taking action. Now, we are dealing with a math word problem, so what you want to do is try to model the situation, try to visualize what's going on. So let me go ahead and show you what I have. So this is my kind of sketch of the scenario, and my sketch can be different than yours, and that's perfectly fine as long as you understand the information in the problem. Okay, so here is a valve. It's 100% open, and if I want to shut this valve, i got to turn it to the right, right? So hopefully all of you know this little saying, righty tidy right so turn to the right to tighten <laughs> tighten a valve lefty loosey righty tidy lefty loosey but that's not really important what is important is that if i want to shut this valve 100 percent it's going to take 80 turns now i'm starting the uh, process of closing the valve matter of fact i already uh, turned the valve 15 turns so the question is what percent of the job remains right so i want to shut this valve 100 percent so what percent of the job remains? Well, we might want to uh, add more detail to our little diagram here. So again, to close the valve 100%, this valve is 100% open. It's, uh, we have to uh, turn the valve 80 turns, right? So I already turned the valve 15 turns. So I have 65 more turns to go to shut this valve, right? Because 80 minus 15, 15 turns is what I already did. 80 turns is what's required to shut the valve. Well, that means I have 65 turns more uh, to go to uh, do the job or to complete the job. So the question is, what percent of the job remains? Okay, well, we need to kind of link together these 65 uh, turns that we have to do and, uh, you know, basically try to equate what percent that represents to finish this job. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. And if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I think I know where this is going. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the problem again. All right, so we have our model, 
And let's just kind of double check here that we have the right question in mind. So what percent of the job remains to close, it, close this valve 100 percent? Well, we already started to close the valve. We turned this valve 15 times, and now we know how many more turns we have to complete in order to shut the valve 100 percent. So we kind of have to start thinking about, you know, uh, what is the actual math question here? So the actual math question is what? Well, if we have 65 more turns to go, okay? So that's what we're really interested. This is the percent of the job that remains, right? So this is uh, what remains. Remember, the question is asking right here, what percent of the job remains, not what percent of the job did you already complete? So uh, what percent of the job remains is equivalent to 65 turns. But of course, we're not interested in turns, we're interested in what percent that rep, uh, those 65 turns represent. All right, so hopefully this is kind of uh, you know making sense. Again, you have to have some basic percent knowledge to solve this question, and the question is the following. 65 or 65 turns is what percent of the 80 turns needed to uh, completely close this valve? So the actual math question here is 65 is what percent of 80? Okay, so once again, we're talking about basic percent, and I'm going to solve this in just one second. But uh, first, I'm going to show you this, and that is an invitation to support this channel. Now, my channel is all about trying to make math clear and understandable and interesting. But as a math teacher, it's my objective to reach as many people as I possibly can, especially on YouTube. And I can't do that unless I get your support. And the best way you can support this channel is to hit that subscribe button. This really does go a long way for me. And if you're going to do that, go ahead and hit that uh, bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. Now, if you're not too familiar with my YouTube channel, I have well over 3,000 plus math videos from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So I like to kind of spread things around in terms of my math topics. I, again, I do basic math or I might do algebra one day or geometry or word problems. So if you enjoy mathematics, hopefully you'll enjoy my content. But if you really want to learn math from me, check out my full main math courses. Again, you'll find links to all of that stuff in the description. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this problem because the problem is, again, let's just go back over here. 65 is what percent of 80? Now, I'm going to show you the solution in just one second. So 65 is what percent of 80? Now, 2 is what percent? Let's just do a real kind of simple example. 2 is what percent of 4? Okay, so if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm not quite sure how to answer this question. We'll replace these numbers with simpler numbers because if you can kind of um, answer this question, 2 is what percent of 4? Well, then you'll probably know what to do in, in order to answer uh, you know, a little bit more complicated question. So when you're confused about a math problem, replace those numbers with easier numbers so you can think about the steps that you need to do to solve the problem. So 2 is what percent of 4? Well, again, most of you are probably saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's so easy. It's 50%, right? 2 is 50% of 4. Well, that is correct. So how did we get 50%? Well, what we did is we took this 2, okay, which is the part, out of the whole, okay, which is the 4. So 2 over 4 is what? That's 1 half, or that's the decimal point 5. Now we have a decimal. So go from a, to go from a decimal to a percent, we multiply by 100, or we move the decimal point over two places to the right. So there is our 50%. Okay, so that's what we're going to do right here. This is not going to be that complicated. So percent as a concept is the some part out of a whole. Okay, so what we want to do is figure out how, what percent is 65 turns out of the entire amount of 80 turns needed to close this valve. Okay, so we're going to take 65 divided by 80, and in our calculator, we're going to get 0.8125. All right, so this is a decimal. So to go from a decimal to a percent, what we need to do is to multiply by 100 or move the decimal point over two places to the right. All right, so let's go to do that. And here, 0.8125 is equal to what? Well, just move that decimal point over two places to the right. Again, that's the result of multiplying by 100. And you can see our answer is 
Okay, so hopefully this was a pretty easy problem for most of you. And if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I was a bit confused. Well, listen, you know, don't feel bad about a math problem that you were not able to solve, right? So learning uh, math is a process of, you know, trying a problem. You know, if you don't get it right, try to understand what you don't understand or try to understand what you don't know. Okay, so you might be saying, I don't understand this. I don't understand that. And that becomes kind of like your math shopping list, right? So you're like, well, I got to pick up some skills about what percent is or how to change a decimal to a percent. So remember, math is a basically a, a bunch of skills. Okay, so before you start to solve, you know, interesting or more challenging word problems, word problems, excuse me, make sure you have the underlying math skills. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.